The Phone 2a is a radically new design from its predecessor, the Phone 1. There are improvements over the Phone 1 in some very important ways, but not in every way because there are some things that I wish could have been better about the Phone 2a. Let me explain by starting with what's different this time compared to the Phone 1, and then we'll talk about some pros and cons, its camera performance, speakers, etc. Now, if you've got any questions about this video, let me know in the comments, and I'll address it possibly in a future video about the Phone 2a, maybe a long-term review summary. So get subscribed so that you don't miss that video. The most noticeable change is obviously on the back panel where you can see that the camera lenses are now located in the top center instead of to the left, which is right on top of the phone's brains. That is a new MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro 4 nanometer SoC. Now, while it still is a camera bump, this has two benefits. Number one, balancing the phone better when it's flat on the table. And number two, the lenses are now being kept away from your fingers when you're shooting pictures and videos. I dig that. And just surrounding the lenses is a new glyph interface that's been simplified to just three glyphs surrounding the camera element. But it doesn't mean that you'll be giving up on certain ringtones compared to the Phone 1, because many of the same ringtones that existed on the Phone 1 are still there, adapted now to fit the simplified glyphs. You also get a countdown timer and the ability for third-party apps like Uber to use the countdown timer to track progress. This wasn't available on the Phone 1, but is available on the flagship Phone 2 and now available on the Phone 2a as well. Turning our attention to the screen, this has a 6.7-inch FHD Plus AMOLED display with variable refresh of up to 120Hz and is now fully capable of displaying pictures and videos shot in HDR. Watching HDR content on YouTube, I was also able to get HDR's peak brightness and contrast, but due to time constraints, I've not been able to try it with other apps at this point. The 2A's camera setup is more or less similar to the Phone 1, only that its selfie camera has been upgraded to 32 megapixels. Otherwise, the rear cameras are the same 50 megapixels for both the wide and ultra wide lenses. And similar to the Phone 1, you can only shoot videos in resolutions up to 4K 30 frames per second. When shooting pictures with the rear camera in low light conditions, the 2A does achieve better color accuracy because pictures shot on the Phone 1 tend to have this green tinge. This does not occur on the Phone 2A, thankfully. Also, the scene brightness seems to be a lot more even now, with even darker areas of the shot being lifted, and in general, I was getting better sharpness in the pictures compared to the Phone 1. For shooting videos, I thought stabilization on the Phone 1 was alright, when shooting from a stationary position, but it got pretty bad when I was walking and shooting at the same time. It had a lot of jitter. Stabilization on the Phone 2a is now much better. As you can see, there's less jitter, but still there is room for improvement because honestly, I've seen smoother. Now, a welcome change is that when zooming in, in video mode, the 2a will now ramp in and out gradually rather than just switching lenses like on the Phone 1. Shooting with the front selfie camera, I was also getting better sharpness and more detail from its 32 megapixel sensor, and we can see this from looking at my eyebrows. Overall, while I would say its camera quality is definitely better than the Phone 1, I wouldn't say it's a huge improvement, to be honest. Its gaming performance is quite decent for a mid-tier device. On COD Mobile, I was able to run it on very high graphic quality with very high frame rate, though not at max frame rate. At max frame rate, its graphic quality got kicked down to high, and ultra frame rate kicks the graphic quality down to low settings. These are the limitations, but on very high graphic settings, the game was running pretty smooth. As a fresh out-of-the-box phone, it runs very smooth of its base 12GB of RAM, but if you're running a more intensive app and it feels a little slow, you can always turn on RAM Booster and stack on another up to 8GB of RAM for a total of 20GB. 
Now, if you're wondering about the sound performance of its speakers, to be honest, they're pretty average. Quite loud at max volume, but more focused in the mid-range frequencies. So vocals are far more prominent than either bass or treble. At max volume, it can get a bit too emphasized to the point of clipping, so it's best enjoyed at about one or two clicks of volume down. I would have been able to make it sound less shouty if there was a way to adjust its EQ settings myself, but there is no such way in the Phone 2A's settings. Also, there's very little left-right separation or sound staging. But overall, if I'm being less fussy, it is still quite usable for gaming, watching videos, and maybe some music. Listen to the samples. pros and cons are, and whether you should buy them in 2024, given what's available in the market right now from other brands. Now, do not Supported audio codecs include the popular aptx HD, LDAC, and LHDC codecs that audiophiles like to use to stream lossless audio. So that's my take on how the Phone 2A compares to the Phone 1. To me, the biggest improvement over the Phone 1 is its camera and how the display can now show the full glory of HDR content. The camera bump's new location in the middle is also a nice touch. Now, am I sad that the new Glyph interface has been simplified to such a degree? Yes and no. I mean, yes in the sense that it's less flashy. No, because in some ways, it is a better Glyph interface compared to the Phone 1 because it's got a countdown timer bar and third-party app access, which wasn't featured on the Phone 1. Now, what I did wish it had is wireless charging. The Phone 1 had wireless charging and even could share power wirelessly with the Glyph interface acting as the charging indicator, but not the Phone 2A. That, to me, is a downgrade, but hey, Maybe some of you are okay with that because you do prefer using the cable anyway. If so, the Phone 2A's improved camera and display should make this phone worth looking at. So if you're interested and you want to check its latest price, I've linked to its Amazon page in the description. I might also come back with a follow-up video about what it's like using the Phone 2A long term. So if you don't want to miss that video, get subscribed and tap the bell button to stay notified. I'm also on X, where I talk about stuff that I'm passionate about. Sometimes I quote famous people, sometimes I come up with my own crazy quotes. So do follow me there. And by the way, guys, click here for my full take on the flagship Nothing Phone 2.